Let us worship and praise God with all our 
is joining in our call to confession. We are here, O oh God, to forgive and to pray. We are here to give you thanks for all you have given us. Forgive us when we feel a bit proud of our prayers and our actions as your people. Remake us when we look down on the marginalized and those who are different. Help us to see all people as your beloved ones and act accordingly. Help us truly be sons and daughters of your love, who know what we are called to do, no matter our age or our circumstances. Help us dream dreams of justice, and then live those dreams in reality. And we strive to be your loving community. When we take your gifts for granted, help us run to the race you set before us. And help us work to make the world you created to be. God hears our prayers and receives our prayers lovingly. God also receives us just as we are in the God's loving darkness that we may feel safe and warm and cherished. God hears our hearts and loves us for it. Amen. Please be seated. Your second reading comes from Joel. Joel chapter two, Joel chapter two, verse twenty-three to thirty-two. Children of Zion, rejoice and be glad in the Lord your God, because He will give you the early rain as a sign of righteousness. He will pour down abundant rain for you, the early and the late rain as before. The threshing floors will be full of grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and fresh oil. I will repay you for the years of the cutting locusts, the swarming locusts, the hopping locusts, and the devouring locusts of Eden. My great army, which I sent against you, you'll eat abundantly and be satisfied. And you'll praise the name of the Lord your God, who has done wonders for you. And my people will never again be put to shame. You will know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God. No other exists. Never again will my people be put to shame. After that, I will pour out my spirit upon everyone. 
Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. In those days I will also pour out my spirit on the male and female slaves. I will give signs in heavens and on earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. But everyone who calls on the Lord's name will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be security, as the Lord has promised. And in Jerusalem the Lord will summon those who survive. Not very happy reading. Next reading comes from 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Verses 6 through 8. I am already being poured out like a sacrifice to God, and the time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith. At least the champion's reap that is rewarded for righteousness is waiting for me. The Lord, who is the righteous judge, is going to give it to me on that day. He is giving it not only to me, but also to those who have set their heart on waiting for his appearance. Please rise to the reading of the gospel. This gospel reading comes from Luke 18, 9 to 14. Jesus told this parable to certain people who had convinced themselves that they were righteous, and who looked on everyone else with disgust. Two people went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed about himself with these words. God, I thank you that I'm not like everyone else, crooks, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I get a tenth of everything I receive. But the tax collector, he stood at a distance. He wouldn't even lift his eyes to look toward heaven. Rather, he struck his chest and said, God, show mercy to me, a sinner. I tell you, this person went down to his home justified rather than the Pharisee. All who lift themselves up will be brought low, and those who make themselves low will be lifted up. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, once again, good morning and welcome back. It's wonderful to see each and every one of you here today. Every person, each and every individual deserves to have a place where they are comfortable, where they are welcome, where they are loved. Every person deserves a community where they can grow and learn and love. That community, can you guess what community that's supposed to be? That's right, it's supposed to be the church. Every person has different gifts, and every person has different ideas. Every person is different, but every person has a place in our ministry. Our differences make us strong. That's why today we're starting a new sermon series. I said the name once. I said the theme of today once. Does anybody remember what that was? Heart, open the hearts. <laughs> That's right, Roger. Open hearts. Good one. You're, you're nailing this question. I'm listening, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the servant series as a whole is open hearts, open minds, open doors. It's a pretty big tenet in Methodism, so I hope it is open. Anyway, yes, this, I believe, is a key part of being a Methodist. We start by opening our own hearts, and I'll start by being honest with you. I'll start by opening my heart to you. I strive to be honest with you, and while I feel like I'm getting to know you all better every single day, I think that I need to open my heart more to the needs of the congregation. Now, from this area, I am a transplant. Right? Uh, so I need, well, I, I, need, I need you. I thought the way to open my heart to you was to help you see what a congregation led ministry could do. But it turns out what you need from me is not outreach. You need me to 
focused inwards. You need me to focus on feeding you, the people that are already there. And that's entirely all right. From this moment on, I'll be shifting gears. We talked about the different groups that are going to be starting and eventually running last week at our round table. I trust that you will do great things with the ministries you as a congregation decided are important. You know, if you ever need help, you can talk to me. I'm not stepping down, obviously. Uh, I am still your pastor, and I'm fully capable of offering support. I'll still be around and available, but my focus is on you. My focus is on the people of the congregation. It's the heart of the church. So, there are many things that bog us down in life, right? The world we live in takes our focus away from the church, away from our friends, away from our loved ones. It pushes us to focus on the task at hand. We aren't even able to get a moment's rest. We push ourselves hard every day, and then, and then, when we have a moment to relax, we can't. Because we've been rewired to either be constantly working or at least pretending we are. Some of us are incapable of rest. And that's a problem. The Lord says to love your neighbor as yourself, right? How much will you love your neighbor if you're placing a heavier burden than necessary on your own shoulders? Christ says to love your neighbor as yourself, and some of us say, all right, well, I overwork myself, so everybody else should be overworked and tired as well. If you overwork yourself, if you expect more than is possible from yourself, you'll be disappointed. You'll be disappointed with the people around you because you'll start to believe they aren't doing as much as you are. And you'll be disappointed with yourself because you're not doing as much as you, for some reason, think you need to be. Okay. Uh, not only by yourself, because you're putting too much on your plate, but you'll be disappointed with the people around you, because you'll start to believe that they aren't doing as much as you are. That they aren't as busy as you are, and eventually you'll start to believe that the people around you are just lazy. We have to care for ourselves. We have to open our hearts to ourselves, because if we don't care for ourselves, how will we show that love to our neighbors? So the first step here, then, is to show love to yourself. Find what brings you joy. Find ways to get involved in the church. That's what makes you happy. Talk to our congregation. Talk to our friends. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your families, your loved ones. The hardest part about being an adult, and take this with a grain of salt since I'm 23, the hardest part of being an adult is the lack of places to make friends. The church is a place where people come together because everyone is welcome. The church is a place where people feel safe. Sometimes the church is where people feel at home. So the first step is finding what brings you joy, then the second step should be connecting to the people around you. And for some people, that might be what brings them joy. The church we stand in, sit in, pray in, sing in, is a house of God. It's God's space. When you start being able to show love to yourself, when you start caring for yourself, then you can start caring for others. When we start caring for others, we make them feel as welcome as we would like to feel in this space. We hold each other up higher standards. We expect more from each other. And because I expect more from you, please open your hymnals to page 34. Go ahead and look for the number 5 on that page. It's about halfway through. Okay, we're just going to do 
our call to silence. So, will you nurture this congregation in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, they might be guided to accept God's grace for this congregation, to profess the congregation's faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representations in the world? Will you serve, or will you who sponsor this congregation support and encourage them in their Christian life? Did you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another? This is the point. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this congregation now before you in your care? That's how we will build the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this congregation with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in the service of others. And we will pray for this congregation that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. So, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father of mine. Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Thank you. When you repeat these words, I want you to understand what kind of commitment you make. If you need support in this commitment, you can contact me at any time. Even if I'm not in the office, the office phone will send your voicemail to my email. Think about these oaths. In fact, keep the page open for just a moment. Think back to our gospel reading today at noon. One pious man, one not. Well, the pious man is outwardly holy, he's not doing enough internally. Well, the impious man isn't doing enough outwardly, He's more bold on the inside. Well, the first man was holy. He didn't have an open heart. He was going through the motions, doing just enough to look good. Meanwhile, the tax collector, often seen as a villain, shows more remorse. The tax collector shows right worship. But his heart is open to the Lord, and the heart is open to the needs of the community. If we close off our hearts to the people around us, the people in our congregation, the people in our lives, the people in our community, we show no love, no care, what does that say about our ministry? We need compassion, we need empathy, as well as an open heart to create lasting relationships. The scripture and your vows ask us to be better ambassadors, better representatives of Christ in the church. Think of Ephesians 4.29, for instance, which reads, Don't let any foul words come out of your mouth. Only say what is helpful when it is needed for building up the community so that it benefits those who hear what you say. Gossip in the house of God is not allowed. It will not be tolerated by or from representatives of the church. This makes us look bad, of course, but it also pushes people away. When we speak poorly of the people in the church, 
on the church grounds, the only person that looks bad is the church. Uphold and uplift each other. We are called to do better. We're called to be better. We're called to represent the church. You know the song, and you'll know we're Christians by our love. We're called to be a community. Show that love to each other. Not just small groups within the church, but to the whole body of Christ as represented in our numbers. Every person is welcome. Every person is important. Every person has gifts that they can add to the church. Every one of you can show the love of God to the world. And I really do believe that. So, as we go out into the world this week, I want you to leave with hope. As we continue our mission, and we will continue, you'll have hope that Christ brings and allow yourself to trust in Jesus. For it is sweet to trust in Jesus. To trust that he'll guide us through all things, even when it seems darkness. All we need to do is open our hearts. Okay, 
sending all the hands. Will you please join me in a moment of prayer? Lord, we come to you when we are weak. Help us to be strong. Help those of us who are suffering to be strong. Help those of us who are here today to be strong. Help us to come together as one holy church, as one body of Christ. For all these prayers, spoken and unspoken, we pray. Amen. Would you please join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You please join me in our offertory prayer. God of the universe, you were with us at the very beginning of our lives, and you will be by our side when we draw our last breath. In between, we struggle through life, too often trying to find our way based on our own wants and desires. And our giving to you this day, may you bless us so that we might better keep our eyes focused on you. That one day we might be able to echo your servant Paul as he said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who loved us even to the cross. Amen. Now, oh, one, one second, sorry. For those of you who are not here with us today, I'm speaking directly, directly to the online service. We do have links on our website uh, to offer online, either through text or through video. So if you have a donation to make, now is the time. Otherwise, for you in person, it's in the back so that you can talk to me on the way out.
We are gathered today to worship Christ. We are gathered today as the community of Christ. We are one in the body. We are one in faith. Open your hearts to your community. Open your hearts to your Lord. Go in peace. Thank you.